Hey, hi Ankita. Hello. Hi. So today we are speaking with Ankita. And Ankita recently received admits from two top five business schools. One is Wharton uh, Business School and one is Chicago Booth with scholarship. And she received a scholarship of forty thousand US dollars from Chicago Booth. And she is currently yes. deliberating whether she should be taking up Wharton's offer or Chicago Booth's offer. Any any yep. other admits, Ankita? So uh, besides this. Uh, NYU Stern yes, is NYU one more. Yes, NYU Stern, exactly right. So, okay, yeah. wonderful. So, uh, what we can do on this uh, chat is that we can essentially do three things. So one is that we can speak with Ankita on how engineers, Indian engineers, they can go about building their profiles if they are targeting these elite MBA programs. So that would be the first video. And then second and third, we can speak about Ankita's uh, interview experiences at Wharton and Chicago Booth, right? Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, great, Ankita. So, if you can quickly introduce yourself, and then we can chat a little bit about your application strategy. Cool, cool. Thanks, Akshat. Uh, so, I am Ankita, and uh, I grew up in Delhi, and I graduated from IIT Delhi in 2014. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, it's been five years uh, to my actual joining. Uh, Before that, I was working as a consultant with KPMG for about a year and a half, and then I switched to a venture capital role with uh, Guild Capital. Uh, for most of the people who won't know what Guild Capital does, it's a, a new U.S. India-based fund uh, which is primarily focusing on internet tech businesses. And uh, here I have a dual. Role where I help out with some diligences, but mostly I take up a operating role in one of their portfolio businesses. Uh, this business is based out of Pune. It is a 500 member company called Attitude, and it's a data science and process outsourcing firm where I uh, manage a business unit. So uh, have been here for three and a half years and really liking the experience and uh, that's when I decided to pursue an MBA and uh, sort of got in touch with Akshat and then carried out the process. Okay, right. wonderful. So uh, as you might have, uh, you know, so audiences who are viewing this, uh, as Ankita was speaking, you might have been wondering that you know she has a stellar profile. She obviously does, and a lot of, <laughs> uh, lot of, you know, a lot of. Uh, I, I keep getting a lot of questions on how to go about building the profile. So I'll let Ankita speak a little bit how she utilized her time of in college uh, to sort of get to where she is now. Perfect. So I think uh, I don't know about college. Uh, like, uh, of course, focus on your grades. I would say uh, they do matter when you are applying to B schools. Uh, secondly, I would say take up one thing that you really like doing. I did not do that very. Oftenly, I used to do little bits of everything, but uh, uh, try to take up one core thing that you really like doing. So, if you like dramatics, take that take that up very early in your college and just mm-hmm. like rise up. Uh, if you like music, take that up. I started uh, developing my interest in doing a lot of placement activities. Mm-hmm. So, I was. leading a team of uh, uh, like internship uh, mm-hmm. providers and then uh, placement cell in in my last year so i was doing a bit of everything but uh, i would try and um, advise people to take up one single thing that mm-hmm. you can uh, show uh, show in your profile uh, i think beyond uh, college uh, mostly with engineers uh, people land up in two types of jobs i feel mm-hmm. one is their core which is very specific to Uh, their stream and second is non core which mm-hmm. covers everything like consulting startup um, investment banking mm-hmm. so in my experience i don't think most of us have a choice in the career that we decide to pursue so i think mm-hmm. the first job is most of a mostly a hit and trial and uh, mm-hmm. people start figuring out what they want to do mm-hmm. so like if you are in a consultant role you'll become you'll be exposed to a lot of different areas you'll know how to like speak in front of uh, like cxos and then you'll know how to make presentations you'll start thinking very logically and analytically whereas if you're in a core job you'll learn more about why you pursued the stream that you pursued and then start thinking about either taking up higher studies or something like that so i would say uh, there's no there's no formula of uh, uh, deciding what to do in your first job but i, I but i'd say like uh, figure out if uh, you're li- really liking what you're doing and what you're getting out of it so for for me in consulting i was uh, 
I was very hands on with my uh, with my cases and I I really enjoyed what I was learning mm-hmm. and I tried to stick to one sector mm-hmm. rather than exploring multiple sectors so that became mm-hmm. sort of my expertise even within mm-hmm. a short time and uh, after that I was looking for something very different to do I didn't want to go into another consulting firm or uh, join something in finance but uh, i wanted to do something very startup y or where i can lead things that's when the guild job uh, came came into picture and they told me about this company that they are operating within pune and how the operational role was very uh, very interesting to me mm-hmm. so i took that up and i came here it was a very unstructured environment and mm-hmm. i tried to figure out things for myself mm-hmm. so i think uh, for me that unstructured uh, set up worked out really well mm-hmm. i had a lot of uh, opportunities to choose what i wanted to do mm-hmm. i was given a lot of freedom to take up whatever i want to do and then uh, like freedom in the sense build your own team build your own mm-hmm. solution build talk to the clients lead a full client so i got all the experiences of running a business mm-hmm. uh, while getting paid for it so i think okay. <laughs> that was uh, okay. that was a great experience mm-hmm. but i would say uh, choose uh, choose uh, within a year i think you'll get to realize what you really mm-hmm. like doing whether it's leading a team whether it's uh, doing uh, hardcore finance whether it's uh, doing consulting again so i think in a year or year and a half try to figure out what you really want to do and in my case it just turned out to be like some series of coincidences that landed me in this uh, position and then uh, after coming to guild i think i realized that i really wanted to take this experience forward of mm-hmm. building a business and uh, that is when i started thinking about business schools mm-hmm. and um, yeah i think that's that's been my story okay all right so i think uh, there were a lot of wonderful insights that ankita shared so i'll just crystallize those in a yeah. way uh, you know so short away so what is that uh, during college ankita participated on one key activity which is dramatics so you should pick one key area that you want to focus on in college uh, second uh, try to maintain a higher gpa or cgpa that's important uh, when you would be subsequently applying to uh, top ranked colleges third and a very interesting point about ankita was that she uh, deliberately focused even within her work uh, in one key area which is tech so for example when she was working at kpmg uh, she focused on one key area then she related and followed it up while working with guild capital which is a vc fund and again her focus was tech this third point is extremely important if you are from an iit because you know most of the iitians do end up getting good jobs but the issue is that you know every year i meet people or work with people who initially start working with like top tier consulting firms like mckinsey bcg bain but then they will switch to something which is completely off the track and they never end up building their profile in one key area and that's uh, the primary uh, you know problem between good iit candidates versus bad iit candidates for mba colleges and as ankita can you know sort of follow up on this that a lot of her colleagues would have applied to business schools from uh, her class at iit delhi and she can tell you clearly that you know uh, many of them or most of them don't end up making it to top 5 programs in the us and this is precisely the reason so ankita any comments on that front yeah i think and more than tech tech is a very broad term i would mm-hmm. say pick up one skill you are really good at so uh, i think in 2 to 3 years people do realize what they are really good at and i think uh, i really like doing uh, operations i really like like building teams i really like mm-hmm. processes like everybody calls me a process girl okay. so i really like doing that so uh, even in consulting even in my job so i think make that your strength and then automatically your story builds around that and uh, you'll realize that all your achievements are circled around what your strengths are god okay wonderful tips there so ankita in terms of like writing your applications uh, what were the key challenges that you faced and how did you overcome those challenges yeah <laughs> uh, quite a lot actually so uh, i think uh, my one of my biggest challenge that i faced was uh, gmat Uh, which was uh, something that i thought i would never have to face but uh, sadly it happened and uh, i struggled a lot with my gmat so for everyone who's uh, who's on the same boat don't worry it's it's okay it will happen uh, like i gave gmat i think four times so uh, three times 
so uh, yeah like uh, basically uh, try to f- take out time from your job don't mm-hmm. mix or the two things mm-hmm. it's very important you won't be able to get like most of the people won't be able to get a good score while mm-hmm. working like mm-hmm. 8 hours 10 hours a day so try to take out like a 3 weeks sabbatical or 2 mm-hmm. weeks sabbatical to focus and then just give it your best shot mm-hmm. and uh, i would really advise uh, for people who are still like 2 years into their job uh, to mm-hmm. give the gmat right away just to because, just to interject there so would you advise yeah. college final year students to write their gmat in final final year itself for sure mm-hmm. for sure they mm-hmm. should do that because that time mm-hmm. you are very analytical you are mm-hmm. you are still in the mode of giving exams trust me after four years of job like giving an exam is the worst thing to do so if you're in your final year do that because that helps you uh, apply sooner because there's a five-year limit so uh, for me i delayed the process by a year just because i was not getting to the gmat so i would advise to uh, give at least in your final year or at least in your first year of job or when you're switching jobs maybe the time that you take in between so that would be a good idea but do it at least a year before you start mm-hmm. applying so uh, i think that's one key thing for me for my gmat uh, secondly i think uh, i started my process very late i was i was like lost and i was talking to people but i was not executing so don't do that don't procrastinate uh, start start your process at least just talk to people and just uh, na- like narrow down your consultant or your mm-hmm. uh, person that you want to engage with uh, in terms of applications and just start the process at least fill out, fill out the forms mm-hmm. i was very late in doing everything and that's why i had to push everything to round 2 and not mm-hmm. round 1 so trust me if like if you're planning to do it do it round 1 unless you have some like job changes that you're expecting Mm -hmm. but uh, round one is obviously very beneficial so start early plan early plan in advance it will take three months of your time but you Mm -hmm. really like uh, cherish doing it early rather than later okay all right wonderful so i think uh, those are some excellent tips that you have already covered so i'll just quickly crystallize those as well so one is that try to take your gmat as soon as possible and if you're in Final year, do take it because your GMAT score is valid for five years. So it's always a good idea to write the exam and clear the exam when you are in that analytical mind frame. Uh, You will uh, increasingly find it hard when you are in the workforce to prepare for GMAT. Number two, uh, you should uh, try to apply in round one uh, as far as possible uh, because some schools, for example, Stanford, they have a very small class size and most of their Indian slots get filled in round one itself. So it becomes a problem if you push it to round two. And unfortunately with Ankita and I, Stanford was the only school where we were not invited for an interview. But rest all the other programs that Ankita interviewed and got through. Uh, so make sure that you know uh, when you are applying to such selective programs, try to apply early. Right? That's uh, tip number two. Anything else Ankita that you would want to cover? Uh, or should we move on to other parts of your uh, interview experience? I think with respect to profile, a lot of people struggle uh, profile building. Mm -hmm. I think it was not in my case because Mm -hmm. somehow I had a good like operational profile where because I was given a Mm -hmm. chance to do multiple things. But uh, generally that is Mm -hmm. not the case with people because they end up focusing on one thing where they are mostly contributing very Mm -hmm. individually. So just uh, I think uh, talk to people, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, start thinking about what type of role you want to do uh, going forward because Mm -hmm. your post MBA goal is something you have to think before it. You won't be able to uh, shy away from it. So while applications, you have to anyways think about it. So it's better to start thinking about it right away and talk to people about what type of roles are generally available Mm -hmm. and uh, try to research there. And uh, taking that as a cue, start uh, thinking where you can sort of add to your profile and uh, add some color. Uh, otherwise, like Akshat really helped me out, pick out the best of what I was doing. But uh, some people don't have those many stories, so try to build out uh, a lot of uh, those, fill out a lot of gaps. And uh, I think that's very helpful uh, to do. And I think uh, 
to your point of starting early uh, one thing that i did which helped me till the very end was that story building uh, exercise that we started from the scratch where so akshat gave me a blank sheet of mm-hmm. writing stories about myself right from childhood so i kept that sheet till my very last interview where mm-hmm. i kept referring to anecdotes from my life mm-hmm. we did not use all of them but it was just helpful to keep going back and forth on that so start building that life story instances out i think that was very helpful all right wonderful so what we can do ankita at this stage is that we can uh, move on to the next part of the video which yep. is speaking about your what in application uh, and interview process right